Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kanok Rak Shaima. I'm a medical student from Jalalunkorn University, and it is my honor to be here today. So I will be presenting my research project on the topic of cost-effectiveness analysis of full thickness resection device for small gastric sub-epithelial lesions. And my supervisors are Dr. Paridme Arunkamun and Dr. Wasin Lauha. We need. First of all, this is what sub-epithelial lesions look like in the fundus of the stomach. And recently, they are increasing in prevalence and are commonly incidentally found during endoscopy. Actually, about 42% of the investigated gastric um, sub-epithelial lesions are malignant tumors like GIST, which is by far the most common one. The problem is that the management for the lesions is still ambiguous in the current ESGE guidelines, where the treatment options include first, surveillance, second, surgical resection, and third, the endoscopic removal options, which has just recently become available in the world. Moreover, tumor size plays an important role in choosing the treatment options, where according to the guideline, gastric gist more than 2 cm are recommended for resection. However, for gastric gist less than or equal to 2 cm are still controversial, where surveillance or resection are acceptable alternatives. So to elaborate, for the first option, using the surveillance, um, using the endoscopic ultrasound, the problem here is that it is not always accessible and affordable and requires a long-term commitment from the patient. For the second option, using the surgical resection from the wedge resection, it is invasive and comes with high risk of adverse effects. But now we have the endoscopic removal option that can be an answer to all these problems. So the novel endoscopic technique to treat small um, gastric subepithelial lesions, particularly the small gastric gist, is called full thickness resection device or FTRD. So FTRD can negate the need for long-term surveillance and can go in and get the tissue out at the same time. Moreover, it can um, have um, minimally invasive and, and compared to um, surgery. But the problem is that it is costly, which is why we would like to do this research in order to find out whether this device is worth um, doing for the procedures that are incidentally found during endoscopy. Since there's no definitive management for the sub-epithelial lesions, our research objective is to compare the cost effectiveness between surveillance and FTRD for gastric sub-epithelial lesions less than or equal to two centimeter. For methodology, so our study focuses on um, Asian patients with gastric sub-epithelial lesion less than or equal to two centimeter. So after we um, determine the required data from experts, three pieces of information are needed for the analysis. First is the cost, second is probability, and last is the quality of life. So for the cost of intervention, um, they were mainly um, collected from the Comptroller General's department. And for the probability of events, um, they were obtained from several research papers prioritizing Asian studies. And for the quality of life, we obtained it from expert opinions where the severity of the disease would be similar to those with um, chronic peptic ulcer. Three scenarios were chosen to represent um, the patient in different um, paths. So first is surveillance, second is surveillance with biopsy, and last is FTRD. Cost utility analysis using the decision tree combined with Markov model was used to um, evaluate the most cost effective scenario. The main outcome of our study is ICER, which is the incremental cost effectiveness ratio. And after we calculated ICER, we also did a sensitivity analysis to explore uncertainties of significant variables. And also we also did a threshold analysis to obtain the optimal point where FTRD is cost effective. So for the model, our reference use um, is surveillance. First intervention is surveillance with biopsy, and the second intervention is FTRD, and these are the assumptions used in the model. So this shows the result of our cost effectiveness analysis. So based on the Thai ICER cut point at 160,000 baht per quality, we found that the cost effective um, intervention for female is FTRD, whereas for male it is surveillance with biopsy. 
One-way sensitivity analysis also confirms that FTRD is cost-effective in most scenarios for female, and surveillance with biopsy is cost-effective in most scenarios for male. So for threshold anal um, analysis, FTRD would be cost-effective in male if the R0 resection rate or the complete resection rate increases to 78.7% um, or if the FTRD price decreases to 63,000 bahts. The reason why female, um, the the FTRD is cost effective for female could be explained from the life expectancy, where the life expectancy of female is higher than male by about five years. This leads to longer surveillance period and higher surveillance cost, making FTRD more cost effective in um, female. And for male, FTRD um, can be cost effective if tumor size um, is less than one centimeter because that would lead to um, higher R0 resection rates. For limitations, um, the quality of life of patients with small subepithelial lesion could not be obtained, therefore we use expert opinion. And for the just recurrences, they were not integrated into the model, although the um, probability of having recurrences were pretty rare. In conclusion, FTRD is a cost-effective strategy for managing small gastric subepithelial lesions, where it is cost-effective in female and potentially cost-effective in male. And lastly, I would like to express heartfelt gratitude to my professors, um, Dr. Parit and Dr. Wasin, and everybody in the slide. Thank you very much.